Look, being a teacher is really great, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie to you. Uh, it's, 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 sometimes it has ups and downs, but do you know what? If you gave me the choice, if you gave me the choice, and I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't choose this, but I would actually go back and do the three years of, for the free the, the undergraduate degree in education studies, as opposed to my computer science degree. If I knew that I wanted to be a teacher, like then, I would have done that. Because that PGCE is hell. It is so difficult to cram everything, every, all the three year material into one year. In fact, not even one year, nine months. Yeah, I would have done the three years. I have done the three year course, spread it out, take three years to learn about it properly, and then go from there. It, That's interesting. So for any aspiring teacher now, to start out, mm. Are there any fields or any subjects that are more in demand than others? Well, I'm I'm a teacher of primary in primary education, so I'm I work in primary schools. Maths and English will always be a core subject, and if you teach in a Catholic school, RE is also a core subject. But the government are pushing for uh, STEM, you know, the science, technology, economics, and maths and math skills. So they're pushing for it. There's always every sort of so and so years. There's always a push for different sort of fields because there's a lack of skills or lack of expertise. So I don't know if you've noticed over the past maybe year or so, there's been a lot of adverts for teachers, lots of radio adverts, podcasts talking about it, YouTube clips, all this get into teaching. You hear about stories about pet of teachers who sit there their story, and that just tells you about the lack of teachers there are. And I mean that industry alone, whilst it's heavily demanding, you know, and and really, really can be really time-consuming. It's uh, I would say it's one of the most life life-changing things I've ever decisions I've ever made. I wouldn't change. Uh, I wouldn't go back for it for the world. So if I did have a for anyone who's aspiring now to be there, a teacher. I would say take some time to think about the decisions you're going to make because as I've always said teaching is a vocation it's a desire to change the life of others for the better so you are putting your heart and soul into making a difference it's not an admin job it's not a nine-to-five it's not your base on emails you, your mind is heavily invested with with the thoughts of another child or your mind is heavily invested I should say with may have, making a better making a good impact a positive impact of a child who does not who's not even related to you who may even forget about you in 20 years time because they may meet a new teacher or they may go into secondary school and they may meet more teachers delayed gratification so is that what motivates you Yes, that's what motivates me the most. I mean, as I've always said, I'm tired of, I'm tired of hearing the the the, the sad stories of our youth, you know, getting up to gang violence and getting up to, to stupidness and throwing their life away, throwing their life away because of the 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 excitement and the selling point of money and fame and and popularity and and the use of drugs and alcohol and all this stuff. It's it's tiring. It's tiring the news hearing about this child has gone, this child has done this, this child, this child, the gang life. It's honestly, it's very, very tiring. What motivates me is to make that difference. I want to, I want to be able to steer children away from that kind of life. I want to show them that there is success in hard work. And I call on at this time, I call on a particular memory of mine where. There are six boys, or six rather, I should not say six boys. In my church where I serve, there were, or there are rather, six men who all attended the same primary school and who all served in the same church. Myself, Murwet, who is my brother, Charles, Namdi, Ezekiel, and Joseph. Six men six black men who lived in Brixton went to a school in Brixton their whole lives were based in Brixton steeped in all the 
temptations and troubles that Brixton had in the 90s and early noughties, who remained dedicated to their education and their faith. Now, these five of them no longer serve because, you know, pastors knew and life takes them on the course. But between the six of us, we accumulated over 100 years of serving in that same church. Between the six of us, and there was a newspaper article in it as well, we appeared in the newspaper for it, there are between 50 to 60 A's and A stars. Between the six of us, there are seven degrees and two masters. And between the six of us, you have myself, who's a teacher, Moet, my brother, who's an accountant, Charles, who's a criminologist and a lawyer, Nambi, who's an aeronautical engineer, so works on planes, Ezekiel, who's a teacher, and Joseph, who's a media, media engineer. Six men who were dedicated to their education, and dedicated to their faith, and through their hard work, see the success. And these six men, if I tell you, and I don't want to toot my own horn because I rarely do that, these, these six men are heralded in the, in the church that we go to. They're seen in the local community as, you know, inspirational people, inspirational individuals. And it's the lives of each of these six men, myself included, that shows me actually, if you just sit down and focus, and actually find the jo enjoyment in, you know, progress progressing. We know it takes 150% to make one millimeter of progress. But if you continue to put in 150%, that one millimeter will increase to two, will increase to 10 centimeters, to a meter. And you will start to see and take satisfaction in the achievements that you, that you make and you create because of the effort. And that's what I want to instill into the youth. It doesn't have to be about this fast life. It doesn't have to be about this quick money. It doesn't have to be about this fame and, acc and, and accolades that they get from being the most popular person or doing the most uh, randomest of things or being the silliest person or, you know, being the, the macho or the alpha male or the alpha female. It's about investing in what you want to do, investing in what you're chosen for, your calling, and then making a hell of a lot of effort to make it happen. And I feel that's what I can do. And I feel that's what I want to bring into this world. I don't see a lot of it, personally. If I'm, if I'm being honest with you, I, don't see, I see a lot of uh, very, very good teachers. And I see a lot of wonderfully educated people. But to make that difference, it goes above and beyond teaching the English, teaching the math. It goes above and beyond that. To the personal connection that you have to develop with each and every child. It's very difficult. 30 different children, 30 different personalities. Some of them like A, some people like B, others like Z, others like, others like a new made up alphabet. But if you have that personal connection, but that personal connection is based on three things. Understanding, respect, and maturity. Then those are the three keys that you need to unlock that child's potential. Because every child wants to be understood and every child wants to be respected and every child wants to be f to feel like they are mature and spoken to and once you do those three things i call them like the you know the three sort of uh, keys if you will to the, to the door then anything is possible you have them by the scruff of their neck not literally but metaphorically and you can take them anywhere you want to go Yo. I don't need a coach. I don't need advice. Okay, right, good talk, coach. Thanks.